Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let's get started. We are starting a few minutes late, uh, this presentation. I'm going to be talking today about the video editing in the cloud. And just to introduce myself, my name is Miguel Silva. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Vimon Media Solutions. We are a uh, company that, is, uh, that specializes in broadcasting and is innovating in, uh, in, um, and revolutionizing the, uh, the digital video workflow um, worldwide, basically. Um, and we're going to be showing you a little bit about how, mostly from a conceptual point of view, but also showing you a little bit about uh, our tools as well. So um, just to recap then, who is Vimond? Vimond is a provider of products and solutions for the premium 2.0 environment who understands the entire ecosystem and its mastery over the underlying technologies. That sounds like something that our marketing team came up, but actually it's a quote from a, a real quote from a customer. Unfortunately, I didn't, uh, I didn't get his permission to use his name and, uh, and, uh, and title. But uh, this is a way that a customer described it to me, basically how he sees uh, Vimont. And I thought it was, uh, it, it was uh, very nicely said, so I use it a little bit in this presentation. But uh, we are a company that's powering uh, approximately 30, more than 30 brands in the OTT TV market globally. Uh, we are owned by the largest commercial broadcaster in Norway. And uh, the reason why we exist as a spin-off today of that broadcaster is because we actually made their OTT service and launched it very early on um, um, and, and grew it to be a very substantial service up in the Nordic markets. And because of that, a lot of broadcasters started asking whether they can source the developments that were, that were done with NTV2, the name of the broadcaster. Uh, for use with their own OTT services. And then TV2 then decided to set us up as a separate vendor so that we can commercialize the technical developments onto other broadcasters worldwide. Our headquarter is in Bergen, a very beautiful city up in uh, Norway. Highly recommended if uh, any of you are thinking of a summer vacation. Um, we have regional offices both in New York as well as in Sydney in Australia. Approximately 150 employees. And we do have a booth here at NAB. We're actually uh, located just right next to the, uh, to the panel theater. So if you do have a chance, or if you're very interested in the topics that I'm going to be presenting here today, do stop by and we can give you full demos of, uh, of, of everything that we do. To get straight uh, into it then, uh, a lot of the questions that uh, broadcasters are asking themselves right now is how can we do more with less? And why are they asking that question? They're asking that question for one very simple reason, which is their traditional business model is a little bit uh, uh, under attack. Um, viewership is pretty much falling uh, from every major demographic between the ages of 2 and 49. And this is according to Nielsen, Nielsen ratings that they did for Q3 in 2016. Uh, you can see that there's only one demographic that's, uh, that's rising, which is the 65 plus uh, viewers. Now, I'm not sure why that is. Probably by the time that they get rid of cable on, on, uh, on, uh, on nursing homes, then that might, demographic might fall as well. But I think it's very interesting that there is one demographic that's actually raising, or, or like that's actually in the rise when it comes to, uh, to, uh, to linear viewership. Um, this is only half of the story, however. So viewership in traditional broadcasting is, is taking a nosedive, but at the same time, viewership on other devices, on OTT, is actually growing exponentially, growing very, very rapidly. Unfortunately, with this setup, I don't have access to my uh, to my uh, uh, to my speaker notes. But uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of re really well documented figures, basically, to show that particularly when it comes to iPhones, particularly when it comes to connected devices, um, Apple TV, Roku, but uh, specifically for smartphones, uh, viewership and particularly for news viewership is rising very very rapidly, and all of that is being actually piggybacked on uh, on social media. So the effect of news, basically, and the, the, the migration, shall we say, from traditional consumption of news on broadcasting, the way that's migrating onto devices, does have a very real impact and a very significant impact on for how news is actually consumed. And the major impact is that a lot of the people are getting their news uh, directly from social media, as opposed through a newscast, which is the way that traditionally you would consume news. You can see from these figures, for example, that over 70% of Reddit users, they get their news directly from Reddit. And that figure is also quite staggering from Facebook. 66% of Facebook users, uh, they use Facebook as their primary source for news and information as well. Twitter, it's up in 59%, and then it, it, it gradually goes on to different, uh, different, uh, different social media as well. Now, this is actually uh, uh, very interesting. This means that broadcasters are having to compete uh, for eyeballs from s with social media uh, networks. And that is actually a very big and direct threat to their business model. And so what can they do to compete uh, against this? And anyway, the entire debate that we've seen here in the United States about uh, fake news, just this really exponent, you know, shows that the, that the problem is real. Because if people are getting their news directly from Facebook, 
and uh, and basically the, the the news that they're getting on Facebook hasn't really been authentic or has been professionally produced by newscasters. Well, that's a problem, and that's a problem because they're winning also the the uh, the, the eyeballs and they're winning the ad revenues, but they're also they're also not uh, not spreading their brand, which is to be a newscaster and to provide uh, uh, you know professionally produced content uh, directly onto their consumers. So what can they do about this, or what, what, what is really the, the problem here? And the, really, the problem that, they, uh, that broadcasters have today is that they're not really set up to compete against the immediacy that uh, publishing on social media um, um, actually uh, is, is set up today. Today, if somebody has an iPhone or, or an Android phone and is walking down the street and something significant happens, they can shoot a few videos, they can shoot some pictures, they can publish within seconds out onto that social media, and they can get a very large viewership of people to actually look at what, what's going on. And a newscaster or a broadcaster isn't really set up to be able to compete against that immediacy. In a typical uh, or a traditional editing workflow, and this is certainly not the case for every broadcaster in the world, but for the majority of broadcasters, shall we say, they're set up um, uh, to be able to, to work in the following way. Normally, you have, uh, you have people that, are, that go out, basically the news uh, teams that go out, and they shoot the news, and they, they gather the video information. Then they start to ingest uh, that video. They usually have an ingest station, typically set up to receive all the video material from the journalists and other sources. Some of them are able to do some transfer over IP. The vast majority of them actually have to come back into the studio, transfer the video then onto the ingest station. Then from there, you start doing the, the stories uh, and the editing um, on editing stations, which is even a separate uh, box or a separate workstation. Uh, then you publish onto the broadcast and onto online CMS in parallel. You trigger uh, a lot of the video transcoding or the, video or the preparation of the video to be able to be uh, consumed on, on social media or, into, or online media, shall we say. And then from there on, this, this, the, the story can finally be, be published onto social media sites as well. It takes approximately anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes for that to happen. 20 minutes is really some of the, the most aggressive um, figures that we've seen. Um, some broadcasters in Europe are claiming they can do it. Certainly our parent company, TV2, takes them approximately 20 minutes from when they actually come into the studio, upload the video, till the material is prepared and the story is ready to be distributed on social media. It takes approximately 20 minutes. 40 minutes if it's, uh, if it's a very complicated story or a very long uh, um, item or a very long story that they're trying to publish onto social media. Now, you can see that then the entire setup is really what's, what's uh, a little bit the problem here. How can you compete against the other news sources that are publishing within seconds onto social media uh, and directly from the source? Well, um, and also there's another problem here that if you make a mistake during the, uh, the, uh, the preparation of the story or if you want to change something because the facts do change as, as you get more information, um, then the editor needs to change the story and then they need to retranscode the complete story again. So you publish, 20 to 40 minutes to publish. If you want to change the story, another 20 to 40 minutes before it's updated out on social media. So again, this is, uh, this is an issue for uh, newscasters. What can they do about this? Well, this is where cloud editing really comes, uh, comes into play, and why cloud editing becomes a very important thing. Um, I think here we have uh, a small video of the tool that uh, we have available. Let's see if it uh, automatically plays. It doesn't look like it's going to play automatically because uh, it might not have cached on my, on my Google Slides, but that's okay. I can play the video after I'm done with this presentation. Um, what is cloud editing? Let's start a little bit with the uh, basics of what cloud editing really is. Cloud editing is the ability to edit videos, prepare and distribute broadcast material ubiquitously. So being able not only from, uh, from the studio, but out in the field from the source, being able to capture the, uh, the video, prepare it, and, and distribute it uh, uh, automatically onto social media and onto your own uh, online properties. Editors work thoroughly uh, or through a full functional browser-based editing client instead of dedicated stations or software. All material is stored securely in the cloud service as opposed to on-premise. Big files are uploaded and transcoding once and can be modified as many times as one needs without the need to retranscode it. And I think this is one of the major points about, the, about cloud editing, the fact that you really only need to upload the material once and then it's available everywhere and you can change it as often as you want. You can update the story as often as you want, and it will automatically refresh and update across all the social media sites or across your online properties that you've already published on. So how does that uh, workflow actually work? Well, uh, for one thing, it's very collaborative. The beautiful thing about the cloud, thinking about the uh, Google Docs or, or Google Presentation, which is what I'm using this now, everything. The beautiful thing about all that, that it's, it's collaborative. You no longer have a one-to-one -one ratio of reporters 
to publishers, shall we say. You can have many reporters preparing material and many people publishing at the same time. You have a many-to-many -many ratio and you have collaborative um, uh, video editing, uh, which is powered by the cloud. So how does that actually then work? If you, if you see that the top boxes, basically, you can get your news material uh, being ingested from a variety of different sources, from, from Reuters, from, from AP, from AFP, uh, or directly from your own video archive. You can get all that basically uh, uh, um, ingested onto a metadata aggregation uh, feed. Um, all IP workflow means contribution and production can happen in parallel, which is a very beautiful thing for, for, um, for, uh, for, for news teams. And the source material is uploaded once and available for everybody to be able to work on the news story simultaneously. The finished stories are automatically created in multiple bit rates because you're working from IP material to begin with. And then since it's, uh, since it's cloud-based, any computer uh, becomes, uh, even a Chromebook, can become a workstation. You no longer need to have highly specialized machines available on the studios to be able to do cloud editing. You can do that directly, uh, directly on the field using very, uh, very, uh, you know, not necessarily uh, the most powerful uh, uh, hardware that exists out there can be used actually for cloud editing. Why? Because the majority of the hard working, the, 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 the crunching, basically the video crunching happens on the cloud, in the back end. And uh, you get cloud scalability and collaboration. That, that's also a very significant point. So normally, if uh, you know, the way broadcasters are set up is they only have one or two different uh, video editing workstations. But what happens if they get backed up? If they get, uh, what happens if there's not only like, uh, the Summer Olympics going on at the same time as uh, the start of, uh, of whatever, uh, whatever sporting league is, is going on at the same time as maybe a terrorist attack happened, major things happening in the world? they're not really set up to be able to scale, to be able to cope with storytelling and publishing um, uh, automatically. But once they move on to a collaborative cloud-based workflow, they are, because the cloud actually can scale up and down depending on their needs. They no longer need to like, invest in a second uh, workstation to set it up, to be able then, and then take it away once, uh, once, the, uh, once the, 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 the story, once they need to scale back down, basically. They don't need to do that in a very expensive way through the traditional uh, manners. They can use the cloud for that. Um, keeping the editors as the center of the workflow is uh, uh, particularly important. Um, having basically very good looking editorial tools that, uh, that uh, work in the same way or then very familiar, shall we say, to the, to the typical offline editorial tools that people have available is, uh, is, uh, is very important. And frame accuracy is, of course, very, very important, which is something that traditionally has been very, very difficult to, uh, to get working on a browser. But with the update of browser technologies that has been happening over the past years, it now is possible, actually, to be able to, to get uh, uh, frame accurate video uh, playing and, uh, and being edited uh, on a browser. Um, so you can have fully functional video editing and you get automatic updates because, again, this is all in the cloud. It's, it's a cloud application. So there's no need to update different video workstations to be able then to get the, uh, the entire workflow updates itself because it's, uh, it's based out of a cloud. Um, this is another example of, uh, of, of, of the tools that we provide. And this is a very real example of how basically broadcasters can be uh, more efficient once they move their workflow out onto, uh, onto the cloud. Um, in this particular case, this is a tool called Vimon Highlights, which we made to be able to extract uh, highlights of a live video feed, particularly for sporting events, uh, being able to extract highlights and publish directly out onto social media. Now, before we actually made this tool, and we made it uh, for our parent company, for TV2, uh, they, they had the, uh, the rights for the Olympics in the Norwegian market, and they were planning to make highlights of every race that, uh, that would happen during the Winter Olympics in Sochi. They were planning on making highlights for that, uh, highlight reels, and publishing out onto social media. They were thinking they would need uh, approximately two teams of maybe five editors uh, to be able to publish a maximum of, uh, of 10 highlights per day. But once we actually developed this tool and gave it to them, with one editor, they were able to publish 200 highlights a day, thereby basically adding significantly to their, uh, to their ad inventory um, as well as being able to compete with the immediacy, basically, of, of, of people that were just shooting and, and uploading things directly onto social media. So this is a very, a very real example of how a broadcaster can become more relevant to the eyeballs of the, uh, of the younger generations and the people that are growing up watching TV on other devices as opposed to on their, their television sets in the living room. So um, to sum up a little bit, what are the benefits of, uh, of uh, cloud editing? Well, number one is speed. 
you're able to uh, to really distribute, prepare material and distribute it um, a lot quicker than you can if uh, if you're using a traditional uh, workflow. Uh, there's a cost savings involved. Again, we're mentioning one of the one of the significant benefits is the fact that you don't need to actually update software that's sitting on a workstation off in some studio and however many workstations we may have, even if it's a very distributed uh, type of architecture, it can be a very uh, very cumbersome operational uh, uh, thing to be able to update all your software and keep it, uh, uh, keep it current. Uh, once you move everything to a cloud editing workflow, basically, that problem takes care of itself. Um, software applications on the cloud basically get updated, everybody gets access to the new features uh, instantaneously. Freedom is a very big, uh, a very big uh, um, uh, proposition. The fact that you can actually, uh, you no longer depend on a physical place to be able to do video editing, to be able to get the storytelling done and distribute it out onto, uh, onto the internet. And scalability being another one of the very big factors. So with that, um, I conclude my presentation. Uh, again, my name is Miguel Silva. Thank you for listening. I think I do have the video here on my desktop that I can just play it for you quickly. There we go. Okay, you don't get the music, but that's uh, OK. So this is our uh, tool called vmod.io, which is again a fully functional video editor that, uh, that uh, works on the browser. Gives you access to all your uh, source material, gives you all the, uh, the typical features that, uh, that you know from video editing, able to work on uh, graphical overlays, as well as able to work on, uh, on uh, voiceovers and different audio, uh, audio tracks, and then distribute automatically onto, uh, onto social media. All right. Well, thank you very much. I don't know if there's any questions from the crowd that I can entertain. We, we do have time for questions, so yeah, we're fine. No? The speed? Yeah. Well, the entire uh, value of the cloud is to be able to increase the speed, to be able then to publish uh, a lot quicker uh, than you can during a traditional workflow. So again, if, if a traditional workflow takes you about 20 to 40 minutes from bringing the video uh, onto the, the studio and publishing out onto social media, you're able to bring that down into a matter of just a few minutes from video, from shooting the video to be it being out on social media. Really, it, uh, it's only like the, the, the time that it takes you to create the story that's, that's the blocker. The publishing part is immediate because you're working on, uh, on IP and you're already using tools that, that you have available and you're using your CDN infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Is there latency between your laptop and the application on the cloud? Ah, okay, okay, latency? Yeah. Yes, well, uh, obviously you depend on, uh, on, uh, on connectivity. You, know, you need to be able uh, to, to have good connectivity out onto, uh, onto, onto your cloud application. So it does, you know, it does matter if you don't have good, uh, good uh, 4G coverage or if you don't have um, access to very fast network, you will see some, some lagging on the video. But these are, all, uh, these are all things that basically we as vendors are thinking about to be able then to make the right compression ratios, caching ratios, et cetera, to be able to optimize the experience. Quality of experience is very, very important. Otherwise, video editors won't adopt something that, uh, that, 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 they, that already works for them today. Any more questions? Yes. I'm sorry, the ingestion process? So again, that is one of the, 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 the advantages of working with the cloud. If you see that the typical ingestion process is that you have to bring the video material and put it into an ingest station, here uh, ingest is, is pretty much being synced and, uh, and, uh, and done automatically at the same time as you're shooting the video almost. So you get like a, a very collaborative effort. I don't know if that answered your questions or you were talking about. So let's say you have a videographer in the field and they need to get your footage to an editor who's going to use your cloud editing software. How, did the, how does the videographer get the footage into the cloud so that it can be accessed by the editor? Yeah, so basically you shoot the, uh, the video, then using vmond.io you, you, uh, you upload it and then it's automatically available for anyone to be able to work on it as well. So it makes it collaborative, that's the whole point, that they're, thereby shortening the time frame to be able to publish then onto other sites.
So it's an integrated solution to both upload and edit, basically. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Great. Then I guess with that, I'll thank you very much. Um, feel free to stop by our booth. I'll be I'll be there, and uh, I can entertain more questions. We can give you a full demo of everything that I've been presenting here today. Have a good rest of the show. Mm -hmm.